Hello everyone, welcome to History and Culture. The First Sino-Russian War occurred in the early years of the Qing dynasty, when both the Manchu Qing and the Russian Empire were in expansionist phases. At that time, the emperor of the Qing dynasty was Kangxi, while the Tsar of Russia was Peter the Great, both rulers were ambitious and aimed to expand their territories. Starting from the 16th century, Russia, from a small principality in Europe, gradually began its expansion overseas. By the fifth year of the Chongzhen reign of the Ming dynasty in China, 1632, the Tsarist Russia expanded to the Lena River basin in eastern Siberia and established the city of Yakutsk, using it as a major base for aggression southward into China, continuously sending armed personnel to invade the Heilongjiang River basin of China. At that time, the Ming dynasty was in its late period and had no time to focus on the disease in the remote Heilongjiang region. In the sixth year of the Xuanji reign of the Qing dynasty, 1649, the Russian army again dispatched troops from Yakutsk, entering the Heilongjiang River in China and facing fierce resistance from the local people. The next year, Russia organized mercenaries carrying three cannons and a batch of firearms and ammunition, forcibly occupied the city of Yaksa. The local people rose again to resist and sought help from the court. In February of the ninth year of Shuanxi, 1652, the Qing government ordered General Ninguda to send troops to rescue, killing ten Russian invaders and injuring seventy-eight. In the following decades, such small-scale conflicts between Chinese and Russian troops continued uninterrupted. After Kangxi Emperor, Emperor of the Qing Dynasty, ascended the throne and successively eliminated the powerful minister Ao Bai, pacified the three feudatories, and established his absolute authority, he finally had the strength to carefully examine the chaos in the border areas of Heilongjiang. Following the principle of diplomacy before warfare, Kangxi Emperor first demanded the withdrawal of the Russian invading army stationed in Yaksa and other places in China. However, the other side turned a deaf ear and instead intensified their aggression, continuously raiding the lower reaches of the Heilongjiang River Basin. Ninguda's vice-governor Sabusu led troops to defeat them and burned down a series of Russian military strongholds established in the Heilongjiang River Basin, turning Yaksa into an isolated city. However, the Russian army still defended Yaksa and continued to resist the Qing army's attacks. In order to completely eliminate the threat of the Russian army to the northeastern border, Kangxi appointed the general Peng Chun to recapture Yaksa. On May 22, 1685, Peng Chun led 3,000 troops with cannons and warships, arrived at Yaksa, and issued a final ultimatum to the Russian army. The defending Russian general insisted on the strength of the city and the sharpness of the cannons, and refused to surrender. At dawn three days later, the Qing army launched an artillery attack, causing heavy casualties to the Russian army, who had to surrender and evacuate Yaksa with their arms, retreating to Nizhny Novgorod. After driving away the Russian invaders, the Qing army destroyed Yaksa and withdrew to Aihue. Although the Russian invaders were forced to withdraw from Yaksa, they did not give up their ambitions in the northeast of China. In less than half a year, in the autumn of the 24th year of Kangxi, 1685, Moscow sent more than 600 troops to reinforce Nizhny Novgorod. They once again occupied Yaksa and rebuilt even stronger fortifications. This arrogant behavior made Kangxi Emperor furious. Upon receiving the report, he immediately ordered a counterattack. In 1686, General Sabusu led 2,000 troops to besiege Yaksa and ordered the opponent to surrender. The old opponent Torbus ignored it. Subsequently, the Qing army launched an attack. Although Torbus was killed by a bullet, the Russian army immediately took over the command, continuing to resist stubbornly. 
The Qing army besieged Yaksa on three sides, dug trenches, patrolled warships on the water surface, completely cutting off the external aid to the defenders, and the Russian invaders were besieged for nearly a year. In the end, out of the 826 invaders, only 66 survived. After learning about the situation of the war, Tsar Peter the Great urgently requested the Qing government to lift the siege because there were Russian noble prisoners among the besieged. He also sent envoys to negotiate the border. The Qing government quickly agreed to Tsar Peter the Great's request and allowed the remnants of the invading army to withdraw to Nizhny Novgorod. On July 24, the 28th year of Kangxi, 1689, the two sides concluded the sino russian nizhny novgorod Treaty. The Battle of Yaksa was the first major war between China and Russia, and the nizhny novgorod Treaty signed after the war was also the first treaty signed by the Qing government with a European power. Both sides claimed victory after the war, and both could justify their claims. On the battlefield, the Qing government won, but at the negotiation table, it was Russia that won. Influenced by Confucianism's internal decay and external respect, and it was the first time to negotiate after the war with European countries. Although the Qing government was the victorious party, it did not demand its legitimate rights and interests at the negotiating table. Historians commented that the signing of the Sino-Russian Nizhny Novgorod Treaty was a result of China's unconditional concessions, and the Qing government's negotiator Sua Ertu handed over the rich area of Nizhny Novgorod, east of Lake Baikal, which originally belonged to China, to Russia, resulting in a significant loss of territory. Moreover, the treaty clearly designated the vast territory between the North Nos Mountains and the South Branch to the north to the Arctic Ocean, east to the Bering Strait, including the entire Kamchatka Peninsula and the entire UD River Basin, as the area to be negotiated, with an area of not less than 3 million square kilometers, or even larger. However, the world's political landscape has changed dramatically. To this day, it has never been discussed again and can never be discussed again. Therefore, the Sino-Russian Nizhny Novgorod Treaty is a treaty of territorial loss. Although they won the war, they lost the territory. This is History and Culture Channel, like, and, subscribe, are the biggest help and support for us, thank you everyone, see you next time.